Okay, well, hello everybody and welcome to Awaken Your Intuition. I'm so glad that you could join me. <laughs> so, in the webinar today, I'm going to be taking you through seven steps to awaken your intuition. And these are really referring to the seven main blocks that I see when I'm working with people to help them develop their intuition. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about more steps that you can take at the end as well, but seven things that might be blocking you from your intuition. And, sorry, somebody just sent me a chat message. <laughs> We're also going to talk about four intuition styles, which is a lot of fun because uh, Cynthia just actually introduced us to three of them <laughs> that can help guide you on your path. And uh, I'll just very, very briefly tell you a little bit about me. I used to be a scientist. I used to be a business person in the biotech industry. And in parallel to that, I spent about six years of my life in a in a modern day mystery school where I focused on opening all my intuitive gifts and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. learning to be a teacher of intuition and meditation and so now I've done a complete turnaround um, I've written some books about it I have a radio show and uh, this is now my life so and I dedicate my life to teaching people about intuition so we've talked about why you're all here. It sounds like you are all in the right place. So this is for, for, for people who, want, who basically want to know more about intuition and want to know why, why I'm blocked, why, it's, why, it's not as, um, why I'm not experiencing it as fully as I want to, or why, why I'm not able to act on my intuition, why I can't trust my messages. Um, and you want to learn a little bit more about What's your natural intuition style? So I think you're all in the right place. Now, because I used to be a scientist, I like to quote scientists. <laughs> and uh, because a lot of the, the really well-known scientists are actually operating from their intuition and not their intellect. And Einstein is one of them. And he's got this famous quote where he says, the rational mind is a faithful servant and the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And that is so true. That's been my experience. And, uh, and I completely agree. The intellect's fantastic. Um, it's the highest vibration of the body, but you're not your body. You are spirit. And there is so much more to how you can communicate as spirit and how you can access information as spirit than uh, is in the intellectual mind. So we've stunted ourselves by putting the intellect above the intuition. This is just a quick definition of, well, what is intuition? It's the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. And I, I kind of use the word intuition as a catch-all phrase. There's so many words out there, psychic, um, clairvoyant, clairaudient, and all of that, but there's, because there are many different ways that you can receive intuitive messages, and we'll start to talk about that in a, in a bit. But basically, it's a way that you receive information immediately, not through your physical senses and not through your conscious mind, but, but in another way, which is natural to all of us, actually. So why might you want to do it? Most people want to awaken their intuition because there's a spiritual reason. I want to know why. I want to understand myself better. I want to understand other people better. I want to know why I'm here. I want to access my higher guidance so that I can make better decisions for my life. And uh, I, I kind of I want to become more confident, more empowered, uh, I want to operate from my own information and not from what other people tell me is real about the world. There are also emotional reasons for doing it. There's a lot of people out there these days, they refer to themselves as empaths and that they get completely emotionally overwhelmed by other people and within themselves. And so 
it's like, well, how do I get a handle on that? How do I take charge of my emotional intuition? The other thing is, because developing your intuition, at least the way I teach it, involves meditating, it involves turning within, then you get all the added benefits of meditation as well, which, in, which include stress relief and letting go of fear and anxiety. And also because your intuition is opening, you, you see reality more clearly. You're able to have a, a different perspective on reality and it's not so out of control and overwhelming when you can see it clearly. Um, so it can help you with your relationships. It can help you with your emotional boundaries. And there's physical reasons. Uh, in the, in the, at the start, we were chatting and, uh, and one of you was saying, well, I got, I got sick because I didn't listen to my intuition. So your intuition can help you with your physical health. It can help you understand how energy works, how energy flows, and therefore help you recover and heal faster. It can also help you not get not to have a problem get to the level of a physical illness and if but if you are ill it can help you manage your pain increase your energy and uh, even sleep better so there's physical reasons why we want to do this and mental reasons too and again at least the way i teach you about intuition where understanding how to position our consciousness within the brain and we're understanding the difference between the intellect and the logical mind and other aspects of the brain that you can inhabit that stimulate your intuition and so um, you are clearing and clarifying your mental faculties and your mental processes and able to increase your memory and your mental focus but also your decision making as well so there's many reasons why we might want to do this and i'm just going to quickly say and again maybe it's my background speaking a little bit but you know when i first came out into the world as an intuitive it was really was in the land of woo <laughs> um, i lived a double life for a long time because i couldn't go to work and say hey i'm a psychic by night but now there's actually scientific research that is really starting to support intuition. Not as much as there is for meditation, but still. They've been researching soldiers and doctors and nurses, all those types of people who have to make instant split second life and death decisions. They've discovered they don't have time to process information in their logical mind, so they make decisions based on their intuition. They also find that business leaders do it too. Business leaders often make decisions from their, 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 their gut or their intuition. Um, and here's a fun one, and this is a slightly older study, but pregnant women who, who haven't had an ultrasound or anything, most of the time they know what, whether they're having a boy or a girl. So there's all different snippets of evidence that show that intuition is a real thing. So here, are we all intuitive? You could type in the chat box if you like, if you, whether you believe that we are all intuitive. What do you think? Oops. Yes. <laughs> yes, says Susan to everybody. Yes, I agree with you. And, um, Again, you know, most people have had a deja vu experience and a deja vu experience actually does relate to your intuition. It, it actually relates to your out of body experience. Um, so often what a deja vu experience is, is that you're actually reliving something that you've already lived through in the astral dimension which is a place out time of, outside of time and space where we can kind of practice for our physical life amongst other things. And almost 100% of people have had precognitive dreams, dreams of their future or, or the future of things that happen in the world. Same reason, they, they are, um, we're often practicing our reality ahead of time. And there's a lot of people who recognize that, that they, they become lucid in dreams. 
Now, all of these relate to the dream state, and it's because when we're asleep or when we're just about to fall asleep or just about to wake up, the intellect isn't engaged. Usually, usually for at least most of us in the West, we, our intellect is so dominant because we've been trained that way. That's what they do at school. They train us in our intellect. They don't teach us about our intuition. But when we're just dropping off to sleep or when we're just waking up or when we're in the dream state, it's easier to access it because the intellect is not operational. All right, so what would it feel like if you were able to answer all your burning questions about your career, about your finances, about your health and about your life purpose or your relationships or your family or your friends or your lovers. It would be amazing if you had access to your, your intuition every moment that you needed it, wouldn't it? So let's start talking about what blocks intuition and action steps that you can take to unlock it or unblock it. And if you want to join in with this, you could grab a piece of paper and a pen and do a little, little thing as we go along, a little bit of self-evaluation here about which are the things that block you and block your intuition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the seven blocks and the seven steps and maybe you can give yourself a score from one to ten how much this is something that affects you as we go along okay <laughs> we were talking about this at the beginning this is the number one thing that people say and whether they're wanting to learn to meditate or whether they're wanting to learn how to access their intuition I'm too busy. My life's crazy. I'm really stressed out. All these people are relying on me. I've got all these responsibilities. I, you know, I'm just like packing all this stuff into my day. I never seem to have enough time and I never seem to be able to prioritize myself. And so even if I do sit down to turn within, I'm just good. I just fall asleep. So that's, that's number one. So make a note in your list if you're writing it down that block number one is, and I would call it the illusion of a busy, having a busy life. <laughs> and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, often we have a concept that we're busier than we are. And if we were able to focus ourselves in the now moment, in present time, all of a sudden, space opens up for us. Because oftentimes we're in the past, we're in the future, we're everywhere else apart from the present moment. So step number one is to commit to yourself, is to put yourself first and develop a consistent meditation practice. And I'll, I'll talk at the end about some options for doing that. Because there are many different ways that you can meditate. And I teach a very specific form of meditation that is part of the ancient mysteries that was used very much to stimulate and activate the chakra system and the intuition and the psychic senses. Okay, so step number one, make a commitment to myself, carve out some time for me where I can uh, set aside everything else that's going on in my life and just folk turn within and focus on me. And then the next one, Let's see if you recognize this in yourself. I call it drunken monkeys because the Buddha said that the human mind is like a barrel of drunken monkeys. And so is your mind incessantly chattering? Have you got all of these thoughts racing around in your head? And it's connected to this perception of being busy, by the way, because if you, if you, if you track your thoughts, a lot of them are about things that happened in the past. This stupid thing I, I said yesterday to my boss, I can't stop thinking about it. Or this thing I've got to do next week that I don't know if I've got enough time to get it done. Or also self-criticism or judging other people. A lot of the human mind chatter focuses on judgment and criticism. Or, you know, your to-do list. 
obsessively just going round and round and round and round and round. So make a note, drunken monkeys. And of course, the, the step to correct that is to quiet your mind. Because accessing your intuition requires that you can quiet your mind chatter enough to tune in to that still quiet voice within. So the intuition, and it comes in many forms, and we'll talk about that in the second part of the, of the webinar, can be drowned out by all of the crazy mind chatter and the stuff going on in the outer world. So we need to quiet the mind. And of course, meditation is the number one way of doing that. But beyond that, there are specific techniques that you can use. There are specific techniques that you can use to... Sorry, my something's happened on my computer. Give me a moment. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, there are specific techniques that you can use that, that, that position you apart from as the neutral observer of those crazy thoughts. So you're not going round and round and round and round with them. So that you're the neutral observer of them. Number three. Block number three to accessing your intuition is being an emotional basket case. <laughs> Having a life that's like an emotional roller coaster ride. Or having a bunch of people around you who are all emotionally triggered that encroach upon your ability to be calm. You know, and so another thing is, you know, I just I I I go into emotional overwhelm. Or I'm sort of all, my emotions are all like um, stuffed down and, uh, you know, and I'm ignoring, denying part of my reality because of that. Um, and I just can't calm down. It just, it's like I'm, I'm like a pincushion. I'm triggered from one thing to the other thing. And I've just got all of these emotions. And when the emotions come up, I seem to just get sucked into them and become the emotions. So this is block number two. And what we're talking about here is the realities of the human body, actually. And so the, the brain, the mind, the mind belongs to the body and the emotions belong to the body. But you are spirit. You are spirit in a body. And so how does spirit take charge? instead of letting the body and the aspects of the body take charge. So step number three is calm your emotions. Because if you're letting your emotions dominate your reality, it can cause you to drown out your intuition. Your intuition is, is spiritual communication. It's you, the, it can be you, the higher being, talking to yourself um, or, or your guides or your God. So if you're engulfed by emotional overwhelm, you need to learn how to calm down your emotions and separate yourself from them. So again, how to position your consciousness, you the high vibration spiritual being, how to position your consciousness in the human body so that you're not just being tossed around on a crazy storm of emotions. And again, there are specific techniques that you can use, but once you know how to do them, it's really, really helpful for releasing emotional disturbances. Okay, number four, effort, trying too hard. People get stuck in trying very, very hard. You know, I get a lot of people who are like, for years and years, you know, I've been trying to develop my intuition. I've been trying really hard. I've been reading all these books. I've gone to all these courses. I've paid thousands and thousands of dollars to do it. And still, for some, some reason, it ain't working. And again, that's because you're approaching it from the consciousness of the body. Everything the body does takes effort. It takes effort to speak, to lift my hand effort but spirit there's no effort in spirit spirit takes no effort whatsoever so so it's a clue if you're in effort and you're trying really hard and you're feeling frustrated because of that well that's a clue that you're not consciously operating as spirit and you need to consciously operate as spirit in order to access your intuition 
because it's guidance from you, the high vibration spiritual being. You are infinite. You are formless. You exist outside of time and space. You use no effort. So step number four is let go of your, the ego's need to control everything and just allow yourself to receive your higher guidance as opposed to attempting to control it and force it to happen. So step number four, relax and release effort. And here's a fun one. So we've got three more blocks to go. <laughs> and this is a really big one too. I call it spiritual perfectionism. And people get very confused about intuition versus ego. And sometimes they get their ego tied up in their approach to their spirituality. They get a bit of a spiritual ego. And so if you find that you're getting in competition with other people, either feeling like you're superior or feeling like you're completely useless and worthless, that's also a sign that you're operating from ego consciousness and not from the perspective of pure spirit. And it's the perspective of pure spirit that gives us access to the intuition. The other part of this is having expectations to live up to. You know, whether that's... Um, so often what people will do is that they will look at other members of a class or the teacher and have a concept about how they're doing it and feel like, well, that, because that's the way they're doing it, I should do it that way too. And of course, your way might be completely different. It might, it might not be the same. Um, you know, we were talking at the beginning before this started and someone was saying, well, I'm clairsentient and I'm clairaudient and I'm claircognizant. So she, so she didn't mention clairvoyant. So there might be people in the class or, or the teacher's highly clairvoyant, but that's not one of your main ones. Maybe your main one is knowing rather than seeing. And so you will invalidate yourself if you expect yourself to be like the teacher or be like other people. And so in a way, you need an experienced teacher who can help you understand that it's not the same for everybody um, and allow you to unravel and unfold your own unique version of this. So step number five is let go of your expectations and recognize everyone is unique and each individual has their own unique style of intuition. You're different to everybody else around you. And your unique experience of intuition, you know, allow it to unfold naturally without superimposing ideas of what it should be like. Love yourself, accept yourself without expectations. Fear is a massive, massive, massive one. And there's so many different things that people get afraid of. And you know, it, it can be a karmic thing. So it's still a small percentage of the population on this planet that get into um, intuition and spiritual stuff. And usually because it's something that they've done in other lifetimes. But there's plenty of experiences in this world of people being punished for um, using their intuition. So there can be irrational fears that seem irrational about it and they can have their um, uh, origins in past lives. But also people get afraid, what, well, you know, what if I see something really scary? Um, what if other people say I'm crazy for believing in this stuff? What if I lose touch with reality? What if I'm rubbish at it? You know, I'm too fried, afraid to try in case I can't do it. Um, what if I have to look at myself and I have to look at painful situations from my past? And doesn't that mean I might re-experience the pain? Not necessarily. It doesn't, but th this is what people are afraid of. And can I cope with the power I unleash if I really let myself be my true being, my true self? And, and when I do this, if I follow my intuition and I change, 
will all my friends and loved ones drop away? Will, will they allow me to have this? So there's many, many reasons why people get afraid of allowing themselves to have their intuition. Step number six is to banish fear. So feel the fear and do it anyway. There's a famous quote by Marianne Williamson, which says it's not our darkness that frightens us the most, it's our light. And when you shy away from your intuition, you're shying away from your light. Intuition is spiritual communication. You are spirit. You are an aspect of God. And uh, open, authentic spiritual communication is a very high vibration of, of, of love. And fear is a very, very low vibration. So take back your power and eliminate fear. And then finally, and we talked about this already, relying on your intellect. The intellect causes you to doubt, causes you to get confused, causes you to like weigh up the pros and cons. And I, what I find is a lot of people don't know what, what, how do I know the difference? That it's my brain, my mind, my ego, my intuition. You know, what's the difference? I can't tell the difference and I'm really confused about it. And the other thing is, what often happens is the intuition comes in through whatever avenue it does. And it, the idea is that you would it just instantly accept it. But what most people do is they immediately put it through their intellect and, and, and analyze it. And by the time they've done that, it's gone. So step number seven is trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. Learn to trust your intuition. Learn how to tell the difference between um, your intuition and your intellect and to stop doubting yourself. So here are the seven steps to experience your intuition style. Is all of these things and all of these things can be addressed through meditation and through specific techniques that help you operate consciously as spirit through the physical body as opposed to operating as the body your ego consciousness so i want to find out which blocks resonated the most for you so i've got this little poll that i'm going to put up i hope you can see it i'm going to launch it now and it shouldn't take a few minutes. Just go through that and put a yes by the, the ones that resonated with you. I might even, I might unmute you all while we're doing this as well. Say as you're viewing the questions. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit while you're filling this out. Um, who found that all of them were a problem? I've unmuted you all. <laughs> you can speak if you want. Where's the other questions? I only see the first question. Oh, really? Maybe is there, um, I might not have the same view as you. Is there, um, it comes up as a whole list of questions for me. Yeah, I can see them if I start Are scrolling down. Oh, yes, there's a scroll bar. Yeah. 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 Cool. And then when you've all done it, I will tell you which ones come up as. Oh, and you know what? What's interesting is you guys are not afraid. And I suppose that makes sense because you're all here wanting to learn more about it. So you're kind of ready. Um, I'm afraid of it. <laughs> oh, you're I'm right. a little afraid. Your answer hasn't, your answer hasn't come up then. Um, from, yet. So. The, oh, that's how. Okay. Sorry. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So some people are busy and some people are not. Lots of people have got a monkey mind. Lots of people are on an emotional roller coaster. Not to effort doesn't look like it's too big of a problem. 
Perfectionism doesn't look like it's too big of a problem. Fear and doubt, not so much. Um, most people don't trust their intuition. Yeah, and so, yeah, monkey mind and emotional roller coaster are big ones. All right. So, so now we've done some self-exploration and we've taken, and, and I would just validate all of those things that I talked about are a problem, at least for somebody in the group. <laughs> so I'm going to end the polling now and um, I'm going to put you all back on mute and we'll do the second part. Oh, I can share the results. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. There you go. I've shared the results, folks, so you might be able to see on your screen what the outcome was. I'll just scroll down. So monkey mind and emotional roller coaster for most of you was a problem. A bit less so the effort, the perfectionism and the fear, but uh, trusting the intuition was also um, an issue. Okay, so I'm gonna let go of that. I'm gonna mute you all again. And we will get back to the presentation. So it's all well and good to recognize your intuition, but there's also another block which can be quite significant for people, which is, okay, I know that this is my intuition, but am I going to listen? Am I actually going to follow the path that it's guiding me on <laughs> or, or not? Because it, be, it can be a scary thing to, it, you know, big life decisions can come up when you start listening to your intuition. Right. Here's another scientist who used his intuition, Nikola Tesla. And uh, he was a fascinating guy. He used to use his intuition to do all of his experiments. He had a form of intuition called abstract intuition, and he used to have a laboratory in his mind where he would set up his experiments and run them overnight and then come back and look at the results. It's all done intuitively. And so he recognized that um, there's a core of knowledge in the universe that we can tap into, and he was tapping into it. So now we're gonna talk about four intuition styles and the challenges that can be associated with it. So again, if you'd like, you can grab your journal and make some notes. And again, the idea is we, what, how much of this do you resonate with? We're gonna talk about the challenges of these styles and, um, and also some examples of experiences of them. And again, you can just do a little self-evaluation and, 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 and see what you can learn about yourself from this. Oh, and uh, actually what I'm going to say as well is I'm just going to talk about four ways of being intuitive, but I do have a free gift for you to thank you for participating live on the webinar. And uh, that's going to introduce you to over 20 different ways of being intuitive. Um, every single chakra in your energy system channels different forms of intuition. Some of them, like the fifth chakra, multiple forms of intuition, and some of them work together in combined ways. So we're going to talk about some of the, the four main ones that you will probably recognize. We've already mentioned them a couple of times, but there's more than this. And, I, and so I'm going to follow up with a gift that helps introduce you to some more. But let's start with this one. Intuition style number one. So some of the challenges for somebody with this as a predominant intuition style, they could be labeled as a sensitive child, that they could have difficulty with boundaries um, and other people encroaching on their space, tending to be a people pleaser, putting other people first and putting themselves last, feeling emotionally drained, confused and overwhelmed, tending to take on other people's emotional issues, being um, a, a, like a, a, a magnet for people who have got emotional problems to want to come and talk to you, can even confuse love, emotions, and sexuality. Um, you know, find it difficult to, 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 to know the difference between those and either avoid confrontation or 
suffer from lots of emotional outbursts. So I wonder if any of you recognize this. So what we're talking about here is clear sentience, which means clear feeling. It is an aspect of the second chakra, which is this energy center in your belly, just below your navel. That's the emotional center. And what clairsentience is, is it's actually a form of intuition that's primary purpose is body spirit communication, i.e. you, the spirit, the high vibration entity, and your body, because you are spirit, you have a body, and you kind of need to communicate with your body. So how is my body feeling gives you a feedback mechanism through your clairsentience about how your body's responding to the reality that you are placing it in. Uh, a secondary purpose of this is to be able to tune in and read other people's emotions. And most people have it the wrong way. They have it back to front. It's all focused out there on other people as opposed to on, on themselves. So that's Claire sentience. Here's an example of a lady that I worked with a fair while ago now. But she was like the classic empath who she had issues confusing emotions and sexuality, setting boundaries, totally emotionally overwhelmed, getting into lots of uh, um, outbursts and arguments. And obviously it turned out that she was a, she was clairsentient, but she didn't understand how to be in charge of her second chakra and her clairsentience. And so we worked together to teach her about that. And she actually turned what was a weakness for her into a strength because she trained as a doula and a shaman. And she's now an expert in reproductive health and works with women through pregnancy and childbirth and nurturing their children. And so her, she be, kind of became a doctor of the second chakra, if you like. Um, so often the areas where we have the biggest challenges are actually where our biggest gifts lie. And that was the case for this lady. Intuition style number two. So here are some of the symptoms or challenges that can come up in a life where this is um, an area of expansion. Either being controlled by other people and feeling victimized or having, or, want, or, or feeling like you have to control others or be controlled or having a tendency to give your power away to others. So some power struggle stuff. Um, as a child, being called a know-it-all and having a tendency to just blurt out and share everything that you know and, and not allowing the space for others to have their own authentic knowing. So you see this in a lot of those um, uh, cult leaders, <laughs> right? They're opening up to this form of intuition, but then they don't allow space for others to know what they know because everybody's different and everybody's got a different perspective. And so hence losing touch with reality, imposing your beliefs on others and getting lost in other realities and dimensions. So here we're talking about the crown chakra, the energy center on the top of the head. And one of the forms of intuition that is channeled through that chakra is called class cognizance or knowingness or higher knowing. Here's an example of a lady I worked with. Uh, this isn't her real name or her real picture. She's a bit shy about that, but this is a true story. She grew up with very controlling persons. She gravitated to abusive relationships. She joined a cult, <laughs> got programmed by a cult, had a pattern of giving her power away to others and believing she was a victim. And, um, and so one of the big, big areas that we worked on together was her crown chakra and her claircognizance. There's another aspect of the crown chakra called transmediumship, by the way, and that was also an area that we worked on. So she really got, um, became in charge of her crown chakra. And now she's a very powerful lady. She doesn't um, give her power away to anybody. And she knows her own mind and she knows what she wants and she goes for it and she creates what she wants. Um, didn't become a career for her like the other lady, but it really did change her life. To know and understand herself and her own style of intuition. Okay, number three. Here's some of the things that can happen with, with, with this one. Having an invisible friend that you talk to when you're a kid. 
<laughs> or seeing dead Auntie Mary sitting in the chair and saying, oh no, daddy, don't sit there because you'll be squashing Auntie Mary. Um, so seeing things that aren't there and, but other people going, oh, it's just a phase, you'll grow out of it. Oh, it's just this imagination, it's not real. So not being supported by the culture and the people around you, being invalidated and therefore, most people go, oh, well, I'm, it's not real. I'll better, better stop doing it. I don't get validated when I do this. I better just use my intellect and do what they want me to do. Um, and um, another thing can be similar to the last one, just blurting it all out or predicting the future or giving advice rather than telling other people what they should do. Um, and then some of the other things that can come up is um, what we were talking about at the beginning that um, it's really hard to access all forms of intuition, but especially this one, if you're getting dominated by your intellect and your emotions or your fears. So here I'm talking about the sixth chakra, the third eye, and this is the classic one that most people think about when they think about their intuition or being psychic is the sixth chakra and the third eye. This is the driver's seat, one of the driver's seats of the soul I was talking about er earlier. And there's a specific place within your sixth chakra that if you focus your conscious awareness there, you can really start to stimulate and activate your clairvoyance. This is like the driver's seat in your body that you, the spirit's meant to occupy. Here's another example of a lady who I worked with. She's an architect actually, and um, she'd, but she'd been seeing stuff and she was like, what the heck, what's going on? I'm going a bit mad here. Why am I seeing these things? And it turned out she was actually a very gifted clairvoyance. And the main thing was she was just doubting herself. No, it's not real. No, I'm not really seeing that. No, no, you know, letting her intellect dominate. So we worked on that and she cleared her invalidation. And now she uses it for all sorts of decisions in her life. Number four Hearing things like unexplained voices, clicking music, ringing in the ears, um, and like, gosh, I must be crazy. <laughs> Normal people don't have this going on. Um, and then like all these different voices, what voice should I trust? I have a really funny anecdote. Maybe I'll just give a sideline. I used to know a lady, um, she was an accountant at a company I worked with, and she started hearing voices to tell her to go shopping. So she listened to them and she went shopping and she really, she drained her bank account until her husband found out what she was doing. <laughs> it was because her Claire audience was opening up and she wasn't able to discern that these are not friendly voices. <laughs> these are mischievous voices and I shouldn't be listening to them. So, you know, a challenge can be discerning just, and with all of them, you know, who should I talk to in the spirit realm? Because not everybody is an angel or an ascended master. There's all sorts of beings out there that you can encounter. So you've probably guessed that this one is clairaudience. It's an aspect of the fifth chakra. And the fifth chakra, is, there's, there's many forms of intuition which are channeled through this one. Um, another one is inner voice which is you, the high vibration spiritual um, being, talking to you, the body. So the clear sentience is listening to the body. This is talking to the body. Inner voice is you speaking to you. Clear audience is you being able to listen to other beings talking to you. So this is somebody who was a scientist hearing voices and music in his head and was actually channeling spiritual music. And it was actually his Claire audience opening up and uh, still not a convert to believe in intuition, but he just explains it by saying he's got a mystical muse, but he's using this gift to um, create music now. He's not crazy. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I'm making music. So which, intu which, oopsie, which intuition style are you? Why don't you write it in the chat? Which one did you resonate with the most out of all the ones that I, the four that I went over? Whether it was clairvoyance, whether it was hearing, seeing, knowing, or feeling. So Lindsay says, the second one, which was knowing, and the first, which was feeling. 
And Lindsay says, I think we all have the ability, but not everyone can access it. And we've got Diane, Diane's iPhone, huh, which says the first and the second. All right. And Susan, hearing, knowing and smelling. Good one, Susan. I will say something about the smelling. <laughs> so, as a, on a physical level, we have five senses. Taste, smell, touch, sound and seeing. And as spirits, we have many more senses than that but actually they don't include smelling and tasting. So how is it possible that some people smell a spooky smell or taste, a, taste a, a spooky taste? There are lots of mediums who are like, oh, I smell cigars, I, your, your grandfather's here. And what's actually happening is that um, spirit is stimulating an aspect of the body. So spirit is stimulating the body's senses in order to um, communicate with somebody. So in a way, spirit has to invade the space of the person in the body in order to do that. Whereas the other faculties are, you're just, they're reading energy frequencies. So it is a genuine spiritual experience, but it's a little bit different because it's not an, it, when you, when you die, you can see a spirit, you can hear a spirit. When you're out of the body, you can see and hear and know, but you can't smell and you can't taste. So thank you for mentioning that. That's cool. So I want to just mention, like I said this earlier, I'm going to follow up with you, all of you that have attended. So I better make sure I've got everybody because I can't see Diane, but I think she's here because she put something in the chat box. I'm going to send you a quiz that will help you delve into your intuition style in a bit more depth. I'm going to send you another presentation, a little mini course that's going to introduce you to all the different forms of um, intuition as well. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about them more at the end as well. So today we've taught you four ways of being intuitive seven steps to awaken your intuition we've talked about some challenges that you can encounter on the journey to open your intuition we've learned a little bit about the relationship between chakras and intuition and seen some examples of some people so i want to introduce you to uh, my intuition course and this isn't a sales pitch i'm just telling you about it and at the end we'll have a q and a um, so the next class is going to start at the begin uh, um, April 30th because I've got a group of students right now that are sort of about halfway through. Whereas it's a, it's a 12 week training program that I have developed that really helps you overcome the blocks that we've talked about and helps you open up the gifts that we've talked about. And um, it teaches you, I, I refer to specific ancient techniques <laughs> that spiritual masters have used in order to access their intuition while they're in a, in a, in a physical body. And um, that's what I'd be teaching you. I'd be teaching you these ancient mysteries. This is how you place your consciousness in your body to activate your gifts. This is how you tell the difference between whether it's your body or whether it's your intuition. And um, so step by step, we go through the course, we learn techniques, we clear the blocks, we learn techniques to clear the blocks, and we add and add and add over a 12 week period. I'm, I might uh, share a different screen with you to give you a bit more detail, um, or at least give you a link to where you can read. This is a very, um, this is the, the full curriculum has a lot more information about each module than this. So this is just briefly showing you how um, over the eight modules, we go through all of the things that we talked about today. 
and you learn how. A lot of courses will teach you about what is intuition without really showing you how, 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 how. How do I clear the blocks? How do I consciously access it when I want to? This course shows you how. And um, each module has got uh, a main teaching, which is basically around about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes of um, introductory lecture, a bit like you've learned today. And then a 45 minute meditation that teaches you the techniques that you're learning. And then you practice the techniques and for a few days. And then we have a live session like this. So you and the rest of the students, you've practiced your techniques, you've encountered some questions and you've had some experiences. And believe you me, all sorts of experiences start happening with people taking this course. And so we have a live session to talk all about it so that everybody can um, get their questions answered, receive some help if they need it, and learn from the other students. There's also, some people like to be kept accountable, so this is optional, but you can befriend, you can be set up with a, another student to um, kind of have a buddy system to keep each other, help each other go through it. There's also a Facebook group where um, outside of the Q&A, you can post questions and I'll answer them. And there are support materials. So every module has a really in-depth worksheet and um, with additional teachings beyond what's been done in the live session um, that you can go back to. And once you're in the course, you're in it forever. So you can keep going back to it um, and refer to it. There's other stuff I put in there, like some of my podcasts and, and so on as well. And then, um, now the course has been going for over a year. So there's a fantastic cachet of Q and A sessions. There's over 32 hours of students as they go through the course. So each module we've got at least four hours, maybe more of Q and A. And often what will happen is that there will be impromptu teachings that I do that aren't in the main course, but because somebody asks about it, we do it in the Q&A session. And so now I'm finding that this is the part that actually the students are loving the most is watching all the previous students go through their unfoldment process and ask their questions um, and, and learn for, for, from the extra techniques that I've put in there. And this may be the last time I do this, but um, what I've been doing is I've been saying that people who sign up for this course get to choose a bonus course because this is my foundation course. And then after this, you can go into um, more in-depth development of these abilities. And so I have a course on the four areas that we talked about today. And at the moment, probably this is the last time I'll do it. Um, you can choose one of those for free. And there's some books, like a book on meditation that I've written and a, another fun intuition book about reading cards, which we, we're not doing that in the course. It's just an added extra. Um, and then um, if you feel like you need private sessions with me because there's things that come up, then I'm going to give you really deep discounts on having those private sessions with me. Um, so that's another thing that you get when you're in the course is, is um, easy access to one-on-one -on -one time. Um, this is just the schedule I mentioned when it starts, um, and I can follow up with this. Uh, the reason this program is different, and you might get this um, when we do the Q&A and the fact that there's only about six of us on this call right now, the program is different because they're small classes and you get my personal attention. You know, there, there are big teachers out there who teach intuition and you don't get to, you don't get to deal with them one-on-one. -on -one. And you certainly don't go, get to go into the depth that we go into on this course. And I, I've got lots of t uh, testimonials from the other students that I can share with you. All right, so I'm inviting you. I'm not selling you, I'm not gonna talk about that, but I'm inviting you to say, this course exists. It's gonna start in about a month from now for the next group of students. And I'd love to have you join me um, 
it's the highlight of my week <laughs> teaching my students in, in this class. It's, it's such a lot of fun and I just love doing it. So, um, talking about another quote, this is from Gandhi, who, who um, he's just basically saying that he, even though he was the minority of one and everyone else was saying something different than him, he listened to his inner voice. And I think that's what we'd all like to be able to do all the time is follow our inner guidance. Um, I will follow up and send you this, but if you want to check out the course, you can go to my website, drlesliephillips.com. And then the course is called Unlock Your Intuition. So it's backslash unlock your intuition. I forgot what I was going to say to this. <laughs> I think I was going to say, yeah, but I realize it's like a big, big, big decision. So you, I want to open it up and say that you can discuss this with me. You can reach out and say, hey, you know, if after the Q&A tonight you like want to chat some more and you want to apply what we've learned today to you specifically and find out more about the course and chat with me about it, you're welcome to reach out. You can reach me at info at drlesliephillips.com and you can reach me even on that phone number, which is my cell phone, because, um, you know, I really want to connect with my students. So 778-235-3039. And once again, I will be sending you an intuition quiz. I will be sending you a little mini course or explanation of the other styles of intuition that we didn't cover today. And in the month of April, I'm going to set up, um, and this is free as well, is just a few coffee, tea and intuition breaks on Zoom like this. And it's really for people who are contemplating taking the course and, you know, want to chat about it a bit more. And so I will send you the schedule for when I'm available on Zoom to chat and you can drop into the Zoom room with a cup of coffee and uh, and talk about taking the course so now i am going to unmute you all i'm going to stop sharing the screen i think and uh, i'm going to unmute you all and see if there are questions give me a moment unmute everybody um I want to see if anyone's got any questions. So Diane, how about you? And welcome, by the way, because I think you joined us a bit late. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, the only question I would have to say I would have is uh, how much it costs. That's pretty, like, I'm interested in taking the course. Okay, well, then let me go back to my slide deck and I'll, I'll show you about the cost. Um, so let me just share my screen again, if I can figure out where the share screen button is. Share screen. I left those slides in the back in case somebody asked. Um, the investment in the course. So, um, all right, this isn't the cost of the course, but when I add up everything that's in it, that's the value of it. Like I, because there's so much bonus material now, there's, uh, I forget how many hours I said, so that's four times eight, like 32 hours of tuition just in the bonus pack. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a mega course. But what I'm charging at the moment is $699. So you really, 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 really get a lot of value. And the other thing is, once you've paid for the course, you're in the course. So as long as I have that course environment open, you can go back and go over the stuff. So in fact, future students, you can go back in the future and watch future students Q and A. So you kind okay. of, it, it, it's, it's, it's the core, it's the gift that keeps on giving really. So that's that. And it, um, you can pay all upfront or you can pay in installments. And there's also a 30 day guarantee. So if you, start taking the course and for some reason which hasn't ever happened say oh I don't think this is for me I want my money back I'll give you your money back um, and uh, 
oh, that's it, stop share. So that answers your question about the price. It's $699 US. I don't know how many of you are American and how many of you are Canadian because I live in Canada, but um, that's the fee. And um, so that's great to know, Diane, that you are interested. And because you weren't here at the beginning, did you um, sign up via um, Sharon's Abundance Adventure? Yeah, that's, yeah. Because okay. I, was, I was working, I was doing energy work and uh, my uh, intuition came up and then I saw it 20 minutes. I'm like, how weird? I'm like, I have to check this out. And that's why I was kind of a little late. But yeah, that was oh, cool that it popped up. Great. Great. Well, I'd love to have you as a student. Um, hopefully I can tell who you are by your email address on my list. <laughs> I, I was hoping that the, um, the uh, Zoom would sign everyone in by their email. If, you want, if, if the chat lets you send a message privately to me, just write your email address in the chat so that I can know who you are and I'll follow up with you about okay. it. Um, all right. And while you're doing that, I am going to unmute Linda and ask if Linda's got any questions. Yeah, um, the questions I had were, uh, what typical experiences would we encounter after taking the course or while, during the course? That's a really fantastic question. And one of the things I've found, because I've taken uh, four groups of students through it now, one of the things that I found is every group has its own unique flavor. And it's, it's almost like it's by no accident that the same people are in the group. Because what I find is that um, each group will go through its own common experiences together. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's, there's, there is and there isn't a typical response. But basically what will happen is um, Every week we have a different focus and people usually start having experiences around that week's focus before that week begins. So, so in module three, we're dealing with the emotions and that, you know, clairsentient stuff. People will start having emotional triggers happen the week before. And it's because you're bringing it up because that week is about clearing emotional triggers. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, there's a week where we might be working on judgment and clearing out judgment. And, and so those kinds of things will start coming up in your life. But I mean, I had one group that were encountering problems with sleep and beings visiting them and wanting to know how to deal with the beings. And that happened in one group, but it was a whole bunch of people in the same group. Um, there were other people dealing with, um, uh, I don't know, pe people in their space, you know, like their husband. How do I get my husband out of my space? <laughs> and so it, it really, it really depends. But it's sort of like whatever is blocking you from your intuition has an opportunity to come up and come out. And also you start, because of the exercises I take you through, the penny drops really fast. Oh, this is, um, this is my clairvoyance. You know, this is what it's like to, to see as spirit. Um, you know, this is the difference between being in my intellectual mind and operating consciously as spirit. So I think that the, you would have an enormous number of different experiences as you go through the course, really. Okay, I'm interested too. Okay, well, that's fantastic to know, Linda. Um, so I, I've made a note about you and then maybe if you could privately send me your email address too okay. in the chat box and we'll ask Cynthia now. Hello, Cynthia. Hi. Hi. Do you have any questions? Uh, um, I had a question that doesn't relate to your course. It was that I sent you an email asking if you were going to see all those pictures behind you, you sent them out to us. We were to get the intuitive message from it. And I asked if you would send an email telling us what the message the picture contained, uh, what it was meant to convey to us so we could know how close we were in, to, in getting that message. I never got a response. So I, so I think what you did was you asked for a free card reading and yeah. and and i and i sent you a card 
Now, bear in mind, I, in some weeks, I get 50 or 60 of okay. those. That's all right. That, I didn't know. I just wondered. So, 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 for, so I, get, I get people who want to follow up and delve more deeply, but I can't really do that because I'm doing it for free. So I, would, I just say to people, if you, if you want more of a reading beyond that, then, you know, book a reading. Because if I, if I, I, I would spend all my time doing the free readings. If okay, I, I misunderstood. I misunderstood because what I thought was those were pictures that were meant to convey an intuitive message. And we were to look at them and try to ascertain what it was. And my email to you said, do you send out a fall, an email telling us what that message was so we could ascertain how close we were to getting the point? Oh. That's what I said, yeah. Okay. So one message to everybody, this is what I meant to convey in that picture. Oh, you don't get, everyone gets a different, everyone oh, gets really? a different image because every, oh. so I, what I do with those um, cards is I, I basically pull a different card at random for each person. Oh, okay. And so everybody is getting a different um, image and a different answer. Oh, okay. Well, that changes but, the whole complexion on it. But what I was trying to say is to say, you know, I can give so much, I can give you a quick answer, but you can get more of an answer because these, these um, images are, they're multidimensional. They're like portals that help open you to your intuition. And they're really good when you're first getting started because, mm -hmm. um, you know, to just, it's like, let the colors jump out, let the symbolism jump out because I could say, well, this card, um, I don't know. Let's see. I, well, I know think, everybody has a slightly different yeah. interpretation, but I thought that you probably had some general message you were attempting to convey with the card, even though everybody might interpret it differently. Yeah, and I do, and actually I do, and, and and actually you get as a bonus on this course, you get a you get access to um, an online space where you can pull these cards at random, and you get an ebook that gives my general interpretation of each of the cards, okay. and I'm also about to launch and put out. Um, where you get a weekly one of these sent to your inbox. And in the weekly ones, you get, um, there's a general message for everybody that applies to everybody mm -hmm. in that one. Okay. But what you did was you said, I've got a specific question and I pulled a specific card for your specific question. Okay. And then I said, but you know what? You're intuitive too. So you could just look at the card and see what comes up for you. Well, I knew you did that for the first card, but thereafter, I thought you just sent uh, everybody the same card for a number of weeks so they oh, could Oh, are you? Intuition. Okay, and are you are you on the autoresponder then? You're actually I getting... I think I must be, yeah. Ah, uh, so yeah. I've had well, you... many cards. Yeah. Okay, well then, they're supposed to have a general message when they go out, so maybe they're not. But that's about... Anyway, it's about to change. It's about to change. And instead of getting the email, mm -hmm. there's me on a video like this talking about the card. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I st I, yeah, you must have joined a while ago to be on that because um, most recent ones um, are, not, are not getting the autoresponder because I've been producing the videos for them. Oh, yeah, no, it's, uh, and I don't know, I can't remember the frequency. It's not every week, I don't think, but I've had probably four cards. Huh. It's yeah. supposed to be every week. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Well, I hope that, sorry, I hope, I'm sorry that you got confused, and I, <laughs> I hope that that's clarified what it is. Yeah, right. at some later point, I might have a chance to find out what the actual meaning is. How many of those cards have you produced in total? Well, I have a deck of cards that you can buy and there's 64 in the deck, but I have um, many painting, many more paintings than that. I have hundreds of paintings. So, no, I mean, in that, in that grouping that you're sending Six, out to people on auto 64. Are they out of that deck? Oh, they're out of that deck. Yeah, right. six, 64. Oh. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And they're my drawings, obviously. Okay. And the story behind them is um, I... I went to a kind of like a modern day mystery school for about six years of my life and very, very intense um, spiritual growth and awakening. And they were just um, paintings I did for my own fun. 
and my own release. And then years later, I realized I'd actually been drawing symbolically my journey of spiritual unfoldment. Oh. And my guides told me to turn it into a card deck because we're all on a similar journey of spiritual unfoldment. So they're, they're relevant to, um, to all of us. <laughs> okay, so I didn't know that term mystery school. So that's, there's a mystery school somewhere in uh, Florida. Mm. Uh, so I didn't know that term before. How many mystery schools do you think there are in the world? I don't know. And they're all a bit different. <laughs> oh, I yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know. But, um, but, you know, I'm what I'm delivering in this course on mystery school teachings, that's where they have their origins because that's my training. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to see if Lindsay's got a question now. Just going to go around to Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hi. No, no questions at this time, I don't think. But I want to thank you for the card reading you did for me. It was, I, I want to call it almost spooky. Oh, really? <laughs> it was really accurate and, uh, yeah, bang on and useful. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. And of course, in this course, I'm teaching, I'm teaching you how uh, how a lot of people use cards and I use them sometimes in training people how to access their intuition, but um, you can access your clairvoyance and your intuition um, without using any intermediary. So when I'm giving readings to people, I'm using my clairvoyance and I'm actually seeing the images with my clairvoyance and interpreting it that way. Um, and so this course will help stimulate and activate your clairvoyance amongst other things. All right, so we've got Diane and uh, Linda who are interested in taking the course. And how about Cynthia and Lindsay? How are you feeling about it? Um, I'm certainly receptive and um, I just have to think about it, whether or not I financially can pull it off. Or not. Okay, yeah. well, that's good feedback. And how about you, Lindsay? Uh, yeah, right now I'm going to keep it in the back of my mind. I'm definitely not in a financial position to right. at the time, but, okay. but I will definitely keep it in mind because it, it is interesting to me. Okay, great. Well, wonderful. Thank you all very much for um, attending. I'm just going to check the chat. Um, huh. Diane were asked she's gone now but she asked if my radio show is every tuesday so because i'll be sending you sending you the recording yes my radio show is every tuesday and it's on um, civl you can live stream it on civl at 7 p.m pacific time and uh it's uh 101.7 across the fraser valley fm and it's also turns up on my website as a podcast and uh, usually there's a week's delay, so we do the live radio show, and then a week later that same episode comes up on the podcast feed. And there's over 200 episodes on the website available for free with different teachings and discussions and interviews. So for those of you who are feeling a bit strapped for cash, <laughs> there's a mine of information on my website that is available for you to explore. All right, so and I'll, I'll just say thank you, everybody. And, um, and then, you know, we'll say goodbye unless there's any last comments or questions from anybody. Thank you very much for this. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Hopefully we will reconnect in the future and um, I'll be in touch definitely with uh, Linda and Diane, and, um, and also I'll follow up with you, Cynthia and Lindsay, as well. Yes, because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it can be facilitated, maybe it can't. But stay in touch, and I do, well, I hope your email or your website is in your, um, your correspondence. Yeah, it will be. Okay, good. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. Good night, thank you. Good night, bye. bye.